Well, hey guys, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> so sorry about that. It's It's been a little nutty. One of our cameras was acting funny and then one of our little USB things like, we're like, why is the camera acting funny? And we pulled on the USB thing and there was just wires at the end of it. And so we're like, ah, so we've got, it's a little bit of like the Keystone video crew thingy going on here. And, um, and then the sound was acting really crazy. So it was like doing this horrible sound and we weren't sure what was going on. And, um, um, with that, and so hopefully, if the sound isn't good, if you could just let us know, like if this starts doing a weird thing, um, in the, in the, just put it in the comments, please. And this week, too, we're doing a whole new thing. We're streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook. So we'll see. We're just, we're just asking for disaster, I think. I don't know. But in the studio today, of course, it's Jackie, as always, over there. Gorgeous Jackie. And the my gorgeous mother. <laughs> So we're here, and it's all a little willy nilly this week. We've been running around, and um, um, so we're getting all this together. But of course, Muhammad Ali passed away, and we're so sorry to hear that. And it, oh, even as, <laughs> I guess as a point in fact of how much we've been running ar ar around, like I don't know, like I, I didn't, I still got my hair in a man bun, <laughs> which is ridiculous. But I was like, oh no, no sound. And so this is um, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm thinking about getting my hair cut the next week or two. This has nothing to do with anything we're talking about the show, but but um, I'm not sure how short to go. I'm thinking like high and tight, you know. Or well, here's the thing though. Oh, here's here's my defense of the man bun. If your hair is, it gets to a certain length, it's just really hot. But finally, if it gets l long enough, you can put it back a little bit, and then it's cool again. But if you just get it cut to that medium length again, you're just hot again. So it's either like short or long, and you can cool off. But anyway, that's my theory. When you say hot, do you mean hot or evening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Not hot. laughs> um, but it's been a weird few weeks. We've um, we've hit like four states. We've been mm. all over the place. We've done like, I don't know, somewhere between around a dozen interviews with different like TV and radio newspapers. We've worked with galleries. We've worked with, um, I don't know how many nonprofits and, and, and charities. And it's, it's just been wonderful. And we've gone through four states where we went to... Um, where did I go? I went to uh, so Illinois. You went to Illinois. You went to Oklahoma. You went to Virginia, and then Louisiana. Louisiana. That's right. Like in between each um, each like state, I'd come home for like eight hours, ten hours, it seemed like, and then able to put some clothes in them, washer. Then you, when you repack them, they're still damp. It's only like eight hours later, and you're <laughs> and then you're off on the next trip, and then you know that's the way it was for Virginia, and then. Um, we, you know, got home, threw them in the washer, wore, wore basically the same clothes over and over and over, and then um, came back. It had like I think eight hours, and then off to Tulsa. And yeah, then, it's funny if you if there's any like footage of us, we're wearing the same clothes like for every different place, but <laughs> I swear they're washed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny, and like I, I felt okay with it because uh, you know every few days you're around a new group of people, so I thought, well, you know, it doesn't look like we, you know, they don't they don't know I keep wearing the same clothes and they're clean, but. But yeah, that's true. We keep taking pictures, and we're always wearing the same shirt. It's like, but John, you basically wear black anyway. Though. That's true. This is true. <laughs> that makes it just insane. It's funny. I you know. I was at a place once, and um, and I was there for four days, and um, and I realized I, I was wearing four black button-up <laughs> shirts. And they're all they all have they're all completely distinct to me. <laughs> to me. I mean, they all look, they have subtle differences, but. I was thinking, I had to tell them, I thought, you know, hey, I do change my clothes. I'm just like a cartoon character. I just look the same every day. But, yeah. But it's been, it's been an interesting trip. But um, Muhammad Ali, he passed away. And um, so today I thought, you know, hey, it'd be great to do a, a painting of him. And one of the cool things, all this traveling and stuff, one, one of the big things about it, and that's one of the things we want to do today is show one of the workshops that we do. We do about 30 different workshops. That we teach in different in galleries and in well, mostly museums, but we also go to schools. But the one that we've done with literally tens of thousands of kids and adults is a blindfold painting workshop, and it's also one that a lot of teachers. I, I get tons of emails from people saying, well, "How do you do it? I'd like to do it in my classroom." Not only for uh, for people that are you know for kids that are visually impaired, which is a great workshop, but also for like disability awareness. So a lot of teachers. Just want their kids to do it, just, you know, to um, understand a little bit more what disability is, disability awareness, that dis disability doesn't mean that you can't do things. So they 
they start showing this sort of stuff. Yeah. So, um, so you know, we're, oh, you know, I should say that we're streaming on YouTube as well. So. Yeah, we're we're live on YouTube, and and I you put us live on Facebook, but to be honest with you, I, I can't find it. <laughs> oh really? Well, I mean, I can see the live on on YouTube, but I, I'm I'm not. I mean, I, it's from YouTube. It's not like. You know, nowadays Facebook's doing a thing where it's live and you see the, like the count of people watching and all that sort of stuff. It's not. It's live with. Um, well, here. The let me. Uh, thing. Is my phone over there? Yeah. Thank you. Here, let me check really quick, guys, because I know I know that we have quite a few people on Facebook, so I, I don't want to. And mm -hmm. one of the main th reasons we wanted to go to Facebook is because some people prefer to chat there anyway. So let me just check really quick because. Um, if we're not live there, um, maybe we can make it where we are, or or I'll stop telling people that we're live. <laughs> um, what was that? Oh, my phone. Man. Well, it is. Like, I should be live on my page. And I'm trying to see, because I tried to share it, but then when I stopped it, maybe it... it um... Did you look at our art page? Or, I... or did you go to the... Here, let's find, let, let me find it, guys, because if you're, if you're on YouTube or if you're trying to find this, then. Um, um, I'm on your art page and I don't see it. Really? Well, that doesn't sound awesome. <laughs> oh, it's been a long two weeks, people. Oh, it has. <laughs> hey, we're fumbling. John, yeah. interesting to know how yeah. you find it on your phone. Well, right? it's, um, can I, can I, can I get Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, it's my <laughs> my uh, my my computer's talk talk to me. So it says it's streaming. Hmm. Is it lying to right. us? So I start again. It says you're now streaming live. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you yeah, know, it was doing it before, then we had to shut everything off because of the sound. Um, um, Linda, you just said the link from your personal page worked earlier today, but not your personal page. I mean, not your own art page. Do what now? It worked on my page, but it didn't from, from your art page. Or, I'm sorry, from your personal page, but not your art page. Okay. Is it working now? Uh, I don't know if that people out there. I, I cannot find it. Hmm. I'm so sorry, guys. Let, let's let's try to see. And if it's not working, we'll, we'll do it next next week. But let me um let me see if I can. We might be able to get it. Okay. Let me see. Gosh, I just don't see what it's doing, guys. Well, let's let's go on. We can we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep up with it. We'll do the YouTube thing, and then probably midweek we'll do something crazy on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. No, I'm not. Yeah. Well, well, dog gone. Okay. Well, I feel bad at that. I think we had around 16 or 20 people on Facebook that were watching, and, and so I feel kind of bad about that. Sorry, guys. Jeez. Um, and it just started, so like we had 16 people that popped on, and then um, and then and then the sound messed up, and then uh, I don't know. But we'll 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 figure that out a little bit better. But so sorry about that. Um. Well, tonight though we're going to do a Muhammad Ali painting. And we'll post this on Facebook later. I will figure it out, and we'll, we'll I'll post it as a video on there. But I, I apologize to everybody that's watching on YouTube because um, you know having to go through us fumbling all over that. But you know, golly, I tell you what. Well, I'm posting it on your on your Facebook, so hopefully. Well, and it was working earlier. That's just one of those things, I guess. One of those many things that I can't do. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I was just going to, you can't do. I was just going to say that. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. <laughs> There's always Jack there. 
So anyway, I'm going to work on this Muhammad Ali painting, guys. And um, um, I'm going to use these bright colors. I was working on it earlier. You know, I actually took some stills about it in the... How, what, what, buddy? It was Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. He's a boxer. He um, he was a he was a really famous fighter for for a long time. That's really confusing until he used to be Cassius Clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna show a close up of what you're working on. Okay. And one of the things too, our our the camera the you like I said the USB um, broke. So 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 Jackie's having to do this through um. Um, yeah, this is cra this is gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah, this is this is definitely the the episode for technical difficulties because she's having to unplug the camera and plug them in because the US because the USB thing it, it um I messed up. Yeah. So anyway, so but I was working on this this drawing earlier and I actually took a bunch of stills and you had another thing about the technical difficulties because the sound was going out. I didn't have a chance to put the stills on here. So I have stills of me working on this drawing this afternoon. Oh, do you? Oh. I do, I do. And um, um, we'll add those. We'll add those into the Facebook. I've got them on my phone. I can show them underneath <laughs> the camera on the phone. <laughs> you know, but yeah. So you know, oh yeah, we can add them in. There we go. We'll, so we'll add, yeah, we can add them in. We're gonna teach people. Don't watch this live. <laughs> the only time, <laughs> only way to watch this is after the fact. <laughs> How long did it take you to do the drawing? I don't know. <laughs> How did you decide which drawing to do? Well, I was wondering. Um, I wanted to do a, a more action, like a more action pose. Yeah. So, so I did one of um, Muhammad Ali like punching. You know, so what it'd be mm -hmm. like? He's coming at you. You know, he's coming at you like a squirrel monkey. <laughs> so you did that just from your imagination? No, no. I was, I was working through 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 some some reference um, photos and things using the oh. the te technology and um, so I was going through like you know like what, what does it look like? How's he move? What kind of he moves so, like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Like, yeah. He does, doesn't he? So, oh, and, and the, the reason that I was doing that too is because I'm working on some different ways to draw. Um, and it was just, it's very experimental, so I wasn't showing it on here because it actually took a while. The drawing took a little while because I'm working on some different ways to be able to draw using um, paints that are thicker. I'm always, I'm always trying to get new ways to do things. And so I was trying to find a way to draw a little faster using a tactile sort of um, ink that or, or paint that I have to use. So that's what I was experimenting around with. And it actually came out, it came out pretty good. I like it. It's, and you can, it, it leaves a very fine raised mark, but it's a way, but, it, but it, it's sticky though. They fur when it first goes on. So it's almost like tar, but it makes it where it is tactile where you can feel it. But then I can draw more the way I used to. So like, if you can tell on his face, it's very much kind of hash marks, sort of. Yeah. I haven't really been able to do that before. It's either like paint on or paint off. You know, very Mr. Miyagi, like is it on or is it off? And but this, so you can go in with a little bit, even a little bit of, of a mark, you can feel it. So. Um. Oh, quick. Uh huh. What's up, Mark? The tar paint. It's it's the it's the paint it eats you. It's oh. the one that killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't know. The paint that killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> it's the type of paint that killed the dinosaurs. You know, um. So, so I was playing around with that. There's also a thing called a posh flow pencil, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing around with that a little bit more because one of one of the things we're doing. We just got off this long trip, and we're about to start a trip to Colorado, which I'm hoping Mom will come out there and join at some point in our camper. All of us can squeeze into the camper because I know that's what Mom wanted. <laughs> so let's go. Maybe you to sleep a bit. Oh, how sweet. I will, Jackie. So I'm going to save that video for you, baby, so when you're 16 and 17 years old, I can play it for your friends. <laughs> you like, I want my name to sleep with you. <laughs> you know what? So the joke's on me. You'll probably be still, you all probably showing it. You're in bed with Nanny. With the cover's tucked yeah. up. Y'all watching the video. <laughs> yeah, he'll be 40 and living in Nanny's basement anyway. So, Jackie, so, okay, we get it. Okay, so we've got some, we got, we've got um quite a few people, quite a few people chiming into the the chat. Um, uh, Valerie's with us. Owen's here. Owen said he um he just finished a, a Muhammad Ali painting as well. So. Yeah, man, I I I saw the face, man. I, you know, guys, I haven't been on Facebook hardly at all. Like I've been trying to check in at least once a day, but things have just been nutty. And but I, I did catch that Owen had put up a Muhammad Ali and. And Valerie, we, we have some of her art, don't we? Oh, yes, yes. Um, 
Yeah, actually, I can go over to that. Hold, give me a second because I can switch cameras. <laughs> and I'll work on Muhammad while you, while you guys are checking out some really cool art that, yeah. that Valerie sent in. Hey. hey. Okay, so. Hey. Um, all right, so we're, let me go over to. <laughs> sorry, we're going. Hey, Jack, can you can you take that into the, the um, linear mail shop? Oh, Honey, take the linear mail shop. Okay, so. Um, Valerie sent us some, some of her work and her husband's work, so I wanted to share that with the crowd. Um, uh, she, she does, um, pyrographies on, the, on, in their own wood, um, and right now Valerie's on the chat, so, uh, at any point, chime in and let us know, you know, um, any things particular about it. I think it's fascinating, um. This one is called Lazy Bear. It's 12 inch square, and she had sold this. And I, I think that I, I, don't, I mean, this is, to me is amazing because it's. No, I'm I mean, laughing because a paint bottle's exploded over here that you guys can't see. It's art. Yeah. I'm not laughing at the art. It's just, oh, yeah, this is a night for technical difficulties. I've got red paint all over me. Anyway, sorry guys. So, anyway, I think this is. I don't know. I would love to watch her in the process of doing this. So I know. She's got um, a website, heavenlylegendsart.com, and a Facebook page. And um, I haven't dug real deep in the Facebook page, but um, Valerie, if you have any sort of um, videos of you doing the process, I'd love to see that. Cause oh, oh, that'd the, be cool. Yeah, the it? detail in, in this bear is amazing. Amazing. So, and then she, she also sent us an image of this one. It's called Hiding. Um, and this is a 9 by 12 on Birch for sale. And it's it's of a fawn just uh, looks like taking a nap or hiding in, in some um, uh, thick grass. And also uh, this one is called waiting. It's four inch squared, and this is um, one of her husband while he was on one of his army combat deployments in Iraq. So and it's on ba um, basswood. Oh really? That's how you pronounce that? <laughs> also like a bus or? No basswood. basswood. Oh bass. Oh really? Basswood. That's it. Isn't that so a tough the fish? detail in this is crazy. It's it's absolutely beautiful. So what what does um, it look like? Can you describe uh, it? It's 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 a portrait of her husband, and it's kind of close up, and his, his um, head is rested on it on his fist, and he's just kind of sitting there, and his arms propped up, so you uh -huh. see the flag um, wow. on his uh, shoulder and his helmet, and it's all the camo and the in the in the, um, in, the U, in the outfit is just amazingly detailed. So. Uh, anyway. Wow, that sounds cool. Yes, it's cool. brilliant. Thank you for sharing. <coughs> uh, and she also sent some of her husband's work. Ooh, what's that? Um, this one is called Forevermore. Mm. So, and this was sold as the signature piece for the 2014 Palette to Palette, um, and it brought in the most money to the local um, Coxonino Co Community College art department wow. in 14 years they've held the charity event so wow that's awesome yeah that's fantastic congratulations man that's that's really cool so and then i'll show you some more by her husband this wow. one's called mist walkers so and this is 23 by 23 inches by 29 inches and um real dreamy sort of foggy landscape with three wolves kind of walking towards you um real you know, ominous sort of, but mystical and, and all that at the same time. And then the last one she sent for, that her husband did, oh, sorry, is this one. And this is called Raven Brings the Stars. So, and this is another one that was donated to the Palette to Palette live auction. Um, and it's based on a Cherokee story told um, to Jason growing up uh, about the Raven, about the Raven bringing the stars to light up the dark night sky. Oh, that's cool. So that wolf that looks Indian, doesn't look Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. So thank you, Valerie, for 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 sharing with that. The the work is absolutely amazing. Um, uh, well, she burns it in the wood. And wow, um, I can't even imagine that. Her husband's that. work, what is uh, let's see, that on here that's it so says. Cool. And that's our photographs. Yeah, so. it's um, hand stretched canvas. So I, I think in some of it's using watercolor. I'm not sure. Anyway, she can chime in and, and let us know. Um, that is so cool, though. You don't, you know, I, I tried to do wood burning when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. I just kept 
fiery wood and burns on myself. I, I never did. Donald's I got little dots, good. little dots here, little there. Now Donna's really good at that. Is she really? Uh, I'm really bothered. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, on the painting, or I'm sorry, on the the one that she had called "Waiting of Her Husband," um, she said that he had just set up a communications tent and was doing security, so he was just waiting. Wow. But, um, anyway, so that, thank you again for sharing, and, and also, I, I know there's other people watching, so please share your stuff, and, you know, once a week, you know, I mean, like, every time we do this, we can share one or two or three people's art, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, and, like, oh, yeah, and like, like, like we say, too, this week, we might do an extra live show, just, just to get the, the live feed on Facebook going, and, so, man, so if you guys have some art you want to send in, Send send it in, man. Owen, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you do. I get excited about art. That's what you were saying. I'm not enough. <laughs> I know, so, I know, so I know. John, tell us a little bit about the color choice that you're doing, and, and you know what, well, what you're going to do here. Well, I'm using some different paints that um Andy Andy Seri, Jackie's brother recommended. They're they're a flow acrylic, and they're they're it's a nice sort of paint because I can I've been using them a little bit with my other acrylics. That way, because you can add different mediums to acrylics. One of the cool things about acrylics is that you can make them flow like water. We make them actually feel like oil, which is weird. And then, um, and then make them really thick, like toothpaste, or make them feel like pancake syrup or batter, and think or syrup or both, either of that, or even even like putty or or clay or so hard you can carve them with a knife. It's just ridiculous. But this is just one extra thing you can do. So you can get this really high pig pigmented, flowy acrylic paint. And um, so that's what I'm, I'm using, and I'm mixing it with some other paint. And I mentioned when we were talking about Valerie's art that um, paint exploded. So I have some more paints down here, but and it's a red tube that exploded because yeah, it's a bottle that's empty. I can read the bottle, and it's so uh, it probably looks like you know a small animal exploded in my feet down here <laughs> in a plastic bag, which is horrible. But it was because of the plane. It's some pl um, paints that I put on a plane, and I actually I learned you know I'm actually pretty good about packing paints and planes so they don't blow up that often I put them in different bottles but every once in a while I don't know if it's a pressure or what it is but they just pop and once it pops the pressure just makes the paint ooze so you all of it comes out and just gets everywhere John I have a question before you go and start before I keep <laughs> rambling on <laughs> you were you were talking about how you came up with a technique to make the paint thicker so you can but you used to use puppy paint so what's the yeah. difference I mean why is oh. it better or Oh, that's a really good question. I, um, I, you know, I still use the the, the puffy paint with the um, yeah. with the the um, sightless painting. I mean, the blindfold painting. Right. And the main thing for that is it makes a really nice hard raised line. Mm -hmm. And um, but the only bad thing is it takes a little longer for puffy paint to dry oh. than some of the acrylics and things that I'll mix because I can mix mediums in with them and do them and 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 paint them thinner so that they dry really quick. Or but you were wanting a faster drawing drying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just something I can work with is faster, and that because I don't, I don't need the huge lines anymore. Right. And if I do, uh, I can mix them with an acrylic paint; they'll dry even faster. But the nice thing about those, though, is that they get this really hard, consistent line, mm -hmm. which is nice if you're teaching a workshop. There are people that are there that have never tried to use their hands yeah. to see before. Not used to it. Yeah, yeah, because they're very consistent. So it makes it easy where you can get a consistent line, and it, you have people helping you, or, or you know, you have people at the place. They can squeeze the bottle and it comes right out. Like you don't have to know how to use a brush or anything like that. Wow. So, and and it's nice though because, especially for parents that have children that are visually impaired, it's a nice product for people to be able to go and get. And because um, you can get it at any Walmart, ho hobby store, Target, you know, pretty much anywhere you can buy this stuff. And it's a tulip brand, and, and the guy is actually really nice. The owner of tulip, the inventor of the stuff, he, he actually sent us an email once just saying um, how great you thought it was that we were using that stuff and something else so. yeah i you know i have a question for any viewers out there um okay so we're about to, we're gonna hit the road for four or five weeks and um, our dilemma is we're trying to get to where john can paint in oh. the truck what was your question was gonna be how many of us are gonna come back yeah it's a viewer question <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many of you are gonna make it back <laughs> no but but um <laughs> i'm curious if anybody out there has a, has a solution for you know, maybe I know that they make um, watercolor brushes that you can put water in the actual tube, and you just squirt it out and you know grab some paint and then brush. My question is, do they have anything that's a paintbrush that has that tube but with um, like acrylic paints? 
Because I'm thinking what would be ideal is like you're on the road and you're sitting in the front seat of the, of the truck and you can just squeeze your tube and, and I mean you may have to like mix on the fly but it might make for some interesting stuff. So what is that? What is that that you got? This and, is... And did you fill it yourself or did you buy it? I filled it myself. Oh. Um, this is a paintbrush pen and you could have been different nib um, sizes mm -hmm. and it's filled with acrylic paint. Does it come out really well? Uh, the easy for it's what I did the drawing with. Oh, okay, cool. But I filled it with the um, acrylic paint that I mixed. Oops, I'm get back on there, but I messed it up. Um, because I use it easy. Because I use it easy flow. But there may be something else out there because this has to be very, very thin to come out. Mm -hmm. But it is thick enough where I can fill a little bit. You know, where I mix this some of this other stuff in with it. But it, you know, and that does thicken it up. So for me, it does make it a little hard for it to come out. Yeah. But um, I'm wondering about that posh flow pencil, you know, if that's going to work. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, if it's your right, I mean, maybe somebody has some another idea, something that's easier. Like, yeah, how do you yeah. paint in a tiny, like, front seat of a car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, can you solve that? Can you solve that problem? Yeah, because, like. The question is, do you ever not change? I mean, well, well I mean, like, when we're on the road, this whole, like, last two weeks has been, you've only painted because somebody needs you to paint for part of a. Yeah, yeah, it's been crazy. I usually I paint every day, and then this trip, because it's been so crazy, we just you know you just don't, we just can't. And then uh, and then in Virginia, my paints exploded again. You know, so I couldn't paint because we're in this really nice house, and and there's no way I wanted to, you know, open up a bag of exploded paints and try to do because it's just. So you didn't paint the whole time. Um, not well, a little, but not like I normally paint every day. There's days I miss. Yeah, and the only time he painted was to hand over the painting to the charity for the, you know, I mean, so it was yeah. something like that. Um, that's almost like a day without side for you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's not it's not cool, man. <laughs> it's not cool. Okay, so, so yeah, Valerie mentioned there's acrylic markers and you know thinning down the acrylics, which I guess is kind of what you were doing. Yeah, you know, um, the only bad thing about, about the markers is I can't feel them. You know? Yeah. So for me, it's hard to be. I know. I know there's like these really cool paint markers and paint pens and mm -hmm. all that. But once it, you know, gets in the paper, or we've tried some gel pens, and so far I haven't found any that I can fill it a tiniest bit, but not you know enough yet. Although, Jackie, you were saying that there there's a different brand though that might work better. It might be thicker. About for the gel pens. Yeah, or? I mean, well, the souffle, which we haven't gotten, which is a standard pen that is out there we just haven't picked it up yet but the souffle i think leaves a, a thicker line yeah so yeah maybe only available in teenage little girl colors <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes man. but um uh deliberately creative stephanie bergeron asked uh, what kind of tube brush is it that john is using so do you remember what that tube what that i mean it, where or where you get it it's a paint that's covered in other paint <laughs> Oh, I mean, uh, I know, because I, I, I went to the art store today to pick up canvas for, for John, and I know that I saw some over me, in the... Let me step over here real quick. I saw some over in the um, the watercolor section, because I think ideally you fill them with water, and then you just do that, but... Oh, well, you can. Say, you can. You can do both. You can fill them with ink, water, yeah. but I, 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 I filled them with, with, with liquid acrylic, and I'm sure... Hold up this camera. Uh, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll just look at it. So, right. Sorry guys, technical malfunctions going on. So, yeah, so can you hold it up a little bit more? No, what is it called? Oh, Color Our Lives? I don't know, I just got them on Amazon. It's just, a, it's basically a tube, it's like a pen, but at the end of it has a brush. Here, let me open one for you. Um, they have brushes. How and cool is that? Jackie's right too. You can fill them with water, and if you use co um, co um, watercolor pencils, then like you, you 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 can color something out with a pencil, and then go back in with this, and it melts the color. So you can you can um, you, you know you don't you don't have to have like a little reservoir of water or anything. Yeah, melt yeah, it kind of melt it blends them and melts them, and you can do different things and with the shading and stuff. So so they're really cool. But for for what I, for what I was getting them for was just to be able to paint with without having to have like. A bunch of liquid paint around you know yeah it would keep the liquid paint like a palette but inside the brush yeah and um so i don't know it's, it's a sticky wicked i think people use palettes for a reason 
<laughs> no, apparently, I don't know. But so, so about this painting you're working on now, is, have you already thought about what color you're going to do the background? Yeah, yeah, you know, but I, I don't know yet. I have thought about it. But I'm not sure, because, um, yeah, Muhammad Ali, is, he's such a character. I mean, you know, I, I have to admit, like, I'm a little conflicted about him as well, because um, I know, like, you know, he, um, I mean, he's a really interesting character, especially in hindsight. But I want to get a color that kind of ma that, that matches him. But um, but one of the, I mean, like with the whole thing with the Vietnam War about how like you know he he was drafted but then he didn't go and then he was you know he had a lot of problems with it, um, you know because they wanted to put him in jail <laughs> and and find him this money and all this stuff. Yeah. And for me, you know, I know like because I had an uncle that was in Vietnam and my dad was in Vietnam and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure that they probably have opinions. I haven't asked you know about that, but. But you know, but so did Muhammad Ali. You know, he felt a certain way, and I have a pretty good feeling my my dad and my uncle didn't really want to go. You know, if they if they could have gotten out of it, you know, in any way. Yeah. So I mean, it's interesting. Like you hear about that, and you hear about this different era and different ideas and stuff. I and then, about that. Yeah, yeah, and he um, but finally he he was stripped of all of his titles and stuff too because of it. But then in 1971, the Supreme Court said um, they 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 reversed it. They said he was in the right. Or something, so he um, so he got his titles back and whatnot, and he couldn't he couldn't fight for a long time because of that, because not not only did they bar him from from boxing because of it, but they also didn't give him a visa, so he couldn't go anywhere else and box. So he was like he would he started boxing for for colleges that they would pay him like fifteen hundred dollars to come in and box, and there weren't there weren't that many of them, but he would he would have to get like all his change together just to get the gas to get to the yeah. college to get you know so he could do that, and then um. But I think when he passed away, his net worth was like eighty million or something. So, you know, he was able to bounce back from that, and he lost like four years of his main, of his the prime part of his of his athletic career because of it. And then, well, didn't he change his name for religious reasons? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Why, I guess that's why he didn't want to go to Vietnam. Something really. Yeah, yeah. He was saying that he didn't want to, um, you know, he didn't want to fight for a, a government that he didn't completely, you know, believe in, that he didn't think had his back. Because, you know, I mean, you know, he's grown up in an era where, you know, he didn't have equal rights and stuff. And he was like, you know, this isn't, it's crazy. I'm not going to go and die for this, you know, for, and, uh, you know, so, I mean. Whatever he believed, at least he stood up for it. Yeah, that's, that's true. And that's, that's one of the things, one of the things I really admire about him is that I don't necessarily believe everything he believed. I don't have to. He was, a, you know, he was an American that really believed in, you know, he, he, his convictions, and that's one of the wonderful things I, I love about this country is that I don't I don't necessarily hold all all of his beliefs, but I, I love it that we live in a country where you have it. I, I admire so much of what he did, and and I love I love the way that he believed in himself too. Like he, like he, he always said like I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, and <laughs> and he, he started doing that when he before like he even he said I I, I said that to myself before I was the greatest, before I, you know before, <laughs> before I believed it. He would just say it, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm great, I'm great, I can do it, you know, and yeah. I mean that's pretty neat. That's you know, we can use more of that. I think I know I can, because I, you know, if anything, I need more of an ego. <laughs> anything that can expand my ego a little more. <laughs> I'm the greatest, yeah. <laughs> Look like a bunny, but <laughs> so I, I, like a bunny flying. I, <laughs> I, like <laughs> I lost my mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. What'd you say? What your whatever whatever you were saying made more sense than what I was saying. Well, my, my, I was going to ask you what what, and you may have answered this earlier, but in the chaos of, of technical difficulties, I may have missed it. What? Why did you choose this image of him again? Oh, I just wanted I wanted action because because I, I was thinking about doing a, a painting where he's kind of looking up or he's looking off or he has this more reflective sort of thing. But one of the things you know, when I was reading about the history more of. Um, of Muhammad Ali, you know, kind of refreshing what what he what he was doing, what he did. I um, it seemed like what he was all about was action, take, taking you know, like he said, like he didn't count sit ups because he well, he didn't really start counting them until he started hurting, because those are the only ones that count. Well, you know, oh my god, like you know, it's like when he's working out, like he <laughs> didn't start doing reps, yeah. like he didn't start counting reps until until you're hurting. Yeah, start counting after. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. hurts. <laughs> I'm getting negative 30. I don't know how to, because I, uh, I don't come anywhere near the hurting. Yeah. Okay. Really, it's so hot outside. The walk from the car to the gym yeah. is probably enough. I'm done. No, um, but I thought, you know, he's all about action. He's about moving. And I thought, 
what would it be like to actually go up to Muhammad Ali, you know, um, and talk to him and all, which I know a lot of people have done, but to be in the ring with him, and I thought, you know, yeah. and doing more of an action painting where, you know, where he's there. Like, when, whenever he was, um, oh gosh, how old was he when he fought George Foreman? I don't remember, but the George Ward Foreman was like the heavyweight, you know, champ. He was, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali had been, but now, but now Muhammad Ali was a lot slower than he used to be because he's older. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to get the, the he won, he won, he's going back to, to get, you know, he's fighting him for the championship. He's older and he's slower, and it's, it's visibly older, and slower. And um, and he's he, there, you know, and and George Foreman, you know, they said had the, like the biggest hitting power of anybody. You know, he was just, as, you know, he hit you and you knew it, you know, and. Mm-hmm. And there, and George said that in the seventh round he was fighting um, um, Ali, and he was thinking, you know, because we would just get him in the corner, and, and Muhammad would like let him get in the corner and just let him beat on him. Mm-hmm. And um, and 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 George said that he decided, well, this is gonna be like any other fight, you know, it's gonna be a knockout, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's go, it's going the way it, it should. And then he 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 landed just like a, one of his biggest punches right on right on on Ali's jaw. Mm-hmm. And then um, and he and, and 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 then Ali leaned over and said, is that all you got, George? And then George said, "Thought this isn't going the way I thought it was going to go." <laughs> and right then he said he knew, like it was, it was different. Like, oh, this is not the and way I thought it was. Younger, yeah, well, and well, he was just like he was at the peak, I guess. And then and Ali was like, you know, kind of past, or he was older mm-hmm. than what you know anybody would have thought. You know, they thought, oh, the rumble and the jungle. Well, you know, even after he got his medical problems, you know, what uh-huh. was it, Parkinson's or what? Wasn't it demands? Oh, what? Oh, was it Parkinson's? It was Parkinson's. Was Parkinson's? But anyway, I bet somebody knows. That, he still had that, you know, that positive. Yeah. And he always had that persona. You never lost it. That's true. You know, you, you know. Yeah. You know, I used to be admired. I never was a big fan because I really didn't know that much about him. But you had to admire his tenacity, I guess. Yeah, it's one of those things like with Prince and David Bowie and all these mm-hmm. people. Like, I, I admire, you know, I knew, I knew about them, you know, but. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't until he died that I thought, well. Don't read up. <laughs> yeah, he started, started looking up about them. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's interesting. <laughs> sure. So, so there. Well, John, did you get anything else that you want to ask for paints or paint? Oh man, I did, and um. Surely you're going to do a steamboat. Oh, I'd love. I should do a steamboat. What's going on? I would. We almost, we almost well, t- took a ride on a steamboat. And well, then, I almost did too, and didn't. We decided it'd be two hundred dollars, and we thought, well, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do it next time. It just and seen we, the same, the same boat, <laughs> the same boat. I mean, it was you know awesome, and just the sound and the, you know, it was just pretty neat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, you know, being uh, yeah, that. that yeah, I, ha- I had fun in the insectorium. Oh, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> that was, was cool. Good, it was fun. Yeah, so now I know for Thanksgiving dinner, all I have to do is catch crickets. They tasted like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was I was happy though because Jack was there and he didn't want to eat a cricket cookie and I didn't want to eat a cricket cookie. It was just fun. It was just fun. It was like I well I don't know anybody out there that follows us on Facebook, but. Um, mm-hmm. and that can see my stuff through John, but, uh, I, there were pictures of me and, and John, and John's uncle Wendell, um, eating chocolate chirp cookies. <laughs> chocolate chirp? Chocolate chirp cookies. Oh, God. And it was just, it's just a little tiny cookie, and on the top was oh. like a cooked in little cricket. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> Been, to be honest with you, it tasted exactly like chocolate chip cookies. Oh although God. I did get indigestion afterwards, and I never get that. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure. It I'm sure it might have been related to all the wine and that mixed with everything on that. But I doubt it was the wine. I think it was a power bust its way through my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't crazy ladies that I ate me. Man. No, it was cool though. We in New Orleans. We yeah, we went to the insectarium. We we. Um, uh, it was, and, and Jack got to see all the people on Jackson Square, and it was funny, we were having dinner, and, and Jack, just on a whim, we were sitting there, and, and Jack was tr- trying to play, you know, notes on his glass, and then shortly we were walking back our, to our hotel room, and there was this man out there with, like, all his, it was at night, so it was really pretty, but there was a man with, like, Christmas lights all in, in amongst these, um, water glasses, and... He was just playing it, and Jack was like, ooh. <laughs> I have pictures of that. I should have loaded up. We should have loaded up pictures of all of our, our misadventures. You should have loaded up uh, pictures since May. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
for sure. Anyway, so yeah, New Orleans was fun, and we always walk out of there. With, I, I, after after a trip like this, I it, you can always guarantee there's like ten paintings that that are gonna have that feel that John does. Oh, yeah. so. I guess so many like that anyway before yeah. he ever went there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the, the, the music from New Orleans. I listen to it every day. Really? And um, yeah, yeah, the New Orleans bounce, New Orleans jazz, the big band sort of sound, all, all that. You never stuff. have listened to that CD out in Boston. No, you know, I have it over here. No, I, I don't have a CD player. I, I don't have a CD player. Oh, okay. But in the, in the truck, though, the car, though, we do. I need, I need to put it in the car. That way we can hear it. Yeah, there you go. You like it. Oh, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Valerie asked if any cricket legs got oh. caught in my teeth. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Uh, no, not that I know of. Although I, you know, Ugh. I didn't ask anybody to look in my teeth. So <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't give Jackie a good night kiss either that night. Like, it's like good night. You're like, mm, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Bye bye. Well, it was the, the the cookie was far better than the other thing. I mean, you go into this thing and they have. A regular lunch area and then you go to this little back room where it's like a little tiny makeshift buffet of things you can eat made of bugs which, oh my God. which are not that crazy I don't know but there was like there was a, a there was some sort of worm salsa oh yeah I didn't, I didn't eat anything with the chocolate chip cookie so yeah, I, I, I mean that was tame compared to the weird stuff that was there I'm kind of surprised so. that it is for the novelty of it you know, Jack? Oh, well, no, he, well, <laughs> he, 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 he's, yeah, he's weird, he's not gonna, he's, he doesn't, he's not, he's not, you know, as crazy as that kid is, he's not that adventurous, like, oh, you know what's funny about the New Orleans trip, <laughs> is that we went to an amusement, we, okay, I've been dying to go to the city park place in New Orleans, and, um, John, and John doesn't like heat, so I was gonna go on the top, I went while he was teaching his class, so I could go walk around with Jack, even though we were drenched in sweat, mm. But um, the inside City Park is this little tiny amusement park, and um, there's this place called Storyland, and you walk around, and it's all like, you know, uh, the old lady in the shoe, and you yeah, climb all over the... It's, yeah, it's cute. And so, and then right next to it is this amusement park where it's got rides, like a big Ferris wheel and a tiny coast, roller coaster, and we walk up on all this stuff, and Jack's like, I want to try that, I want to do that, but when we actually go to it, he's like, nah, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, at one point, we're doing all these things that he wants to do, and then I want to, there's this one particular ride that I absolutely love. Every time we go to any carnival, any amusement park, I have to do this ride. And it's the, it's usually called the Sizzler. I don't know what oh. it's called anywhere else. You know it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tried but to kill is, mom with that one. Yeah. What it is, is it's basically the, okay, it's basically all these now little, you're after migrants. <laughs> it's all these little chairs, these little seats, the metal seats, and you sit in them. And the whole thing just goes around and around and around and around. So you constantly get squished to the side. And, and then you get like thrown to one side. And then you get squished to the other side as it's going around. Well, I, you know, I, I was like, I, you got to go on this, Jack. And he's not that adventurous. So he was a little freaked out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I'm trying to play it up like, come on, Back it's going to be great. You know, yeah. <laughs> And um, and so finally he gets on it and he and he, and, and he the first like time it throws you to the side he's like ah! and, then I, and then I was joking with him and I was like oh it's you know make it, trying to make it so it wasn't that big of a deal and then he he came to and thought it was fun and and then I told came him to. and then I told him, <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him about how I tried to have. How I showed that that awesome ride to Debbie back in the day, and uh, she didn't appreciate it. <laughs> but whatever, it was fun. So yeah. that was his favorite. Yeah, that was, well, that, yeah, you told me oh, it's fun, fun. And then when we got off, so I'm like, oh my god, Jack. And he said, I, I, I asked you, I said, oh, I've never been there before in my life. Yeah, I, well, I might have gotten <laughs> confused with another ride. I don't know. I didn't know what it was going to do. What it was yeah, going. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and didn't didn't you you were you were having you were having some sort of medical thing at the time, yeah. wasn't it? Where you weren't supposed to get excited or anything. Yeah, and like and like he's like, oh, it's calm. <laughs> it's what it's just you just go around in a circle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they said stay calm for the art <laughs> test. I was just trying to save you some money. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it didn't explode on the ride. Probably didn't need to go in. Money. <laughs> even yeah. though I don't think I remember even. I think I was just dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a good time. 
Well, you are you are you are an adventurous woman, unless a, a bee flies in the room, or, oh or 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 you have to get on a plane with a propeller, and then everything changes. I'm telling you, man, it's different though. I don't know if I'm allergic. I could die, and the propeller, my that plane might as well have chickens in the back. I don't know. That's not cool. That's not cool. Oh, oh yeah, one of the one of the the trips we just took to uh, Virginia, we had to get on a, 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 a well, it was, it was a turboprop. So, I mean, it's like, it was a jet. It just has a, it has propellers. But I love those planes because they're loud and they're you yeah, know you I just feel like there ought to be dots right. coming out the back of it. You know, like like Indiana Jones. I always wish I had a hat. I mean, to wear. it was constantly bumpy. I mean, there yeah. and, and I would I'm I'm like yeah. this. I'm buried. I'm buried in John's like shoulder because I don't know. Yeah, he could save me if I go down. So I'm burying <laughs> myself in there, like trying to like go to my happy place. And I, every once in a while, look up to see if anybody else is as is as worried as I am. And they're all like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I'm like, don't you people see the giant dropping and jumping? And What's nobody, that story when, when you... Nobody seemed to care. Tell, <laughs> can die. Tell, tell everybody the story of um, when, when you're on a plane and you, and, and you fell asleep. <laughs> well, I, I, okay, so yeah, I mean, it's no secret I don't really like to fly, but we fly a lot because of, of this stuff. But... Um, Shenanigans. So I have to... I, I make it a point to go to the airport early because you're told to and because I can go to the airport bar and just chill I can I can have a few drinks or whatever <laughs> and get, build up that liquid courage well I was going to visit a friend and I ha I had you know some drinks or whatever and, I, and just enough to like make me at least try to sleep on the plane and so we get on the plane and I'm sitting there I fall asleep and I'm it's towards the end of the flight, and I guess I was having some sort of dream where oh the plane was going down, like going down. <laughs> We're gonna die going down, and and all of a sudden, right then, in the middle of my dream, the plane actually lands because like, I felt I was asleep when it was landing, and the the impact of it landing woke me up, and I was like, and I just started screaming. I was like, ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> she turned over to the the woman that was like just calmly ri just riding the plane, like. Oh, well, you know, having, having like, oh, look, the trip's over, we're, you know, we're landing, it's been a nice, quiet trip, because, you know, this lady, this crazy woman next to her has been asleep for, you know, a while, so it's nice and quiet. They bump, Jackie wakes up and starts screaming in her face, just, ah! <laughs> Dying. What did she do? She just looked at me like. She like wet herself. And then I was like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I bet she has a turn of flying now. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, I don't like to fly. I'll do no, it, but I don't like to do it. It's the it's the land. It's the taking off and landing. I don't I don't like. Yeah, in the turbulence yeah. and the being at thirty five thousand. <laughs> it's all of it. I don't like to fly. <laughs> You'll find me at the uh, airport bar. I don't really mind the tur tur turbulence and stuff. I don't know. No. Like I like a little bit of it. I mean, you're almost like you're on a roller coaster. Really, it feels like you're getting your money's worth. But, you know, but yeah. I don't know. But no, I I, did, I didn't want a cricket cookie though. I've had I've had I've had, I've had, I've had cho chocolate covered ants before. And, uh, you know, yeah. Just, yeah. Why'd you do that? Wow, so you, uh, just cause. So you've got a lot more on the the painting since we last checked it out. What's, what's well, you guys have been nutty over there? So so what what are you? What are some stuff going on here? What are you doing? Well, I'm just putting I'm, I'm just putting in a basic sort of coat of different colors, sort of cover it up. It's gonna be some bright colors and um um just sort of a base so that the colors that I start building up. I, I can work with this. <laughs> so so I've got the ground, the, the background of it, you know, and then I'm letting it, I'm doing a very thin sort of coat. So the more that, that I, I build up on this, it'll um, it'll dry and it won't mix. How it'll it'll keep the, painting, John? it's 18 by 24 inches. I'm sorry to say your hands look so big. He is a big man. Your hands so tiny at the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is neat though, the way he did his fist like that because you know, to show his power. More power. Thank you. And, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's the same reason I drink out of a large glass. It makes my <laughs> makes my hands like la ladylike. Sit in the big chair and wear baggy pants. Yeah. <laughs> look at those, look at those delicate mittens he has. So what other colors are you going to add to his face? Well, I don't, I'm not sure. I, you know, I'm not sure. I added, I mean, it's going to be all these kind of colors, but then I'm kind of letting it 
go a little bit as I'm doing it. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I didn't, I don't know, it felt like be free playing too much. Yeah. It just, it looks, um. Shouldn't he be darker? I mean. Well, he will be. Oh. He yeah, he's be. got, he's got a little bit of an iron deficiency right now. Yeah, he does. Oh, you mean that he's like a yellow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, and, he's just, he's just jaundiced. That's yeah. All. And he has a French pedicure, manicure, manicure, <laughs> manicure that watch comes up. Oh. <laughs> 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 It's a work in progress, guys. We're such critics. We're such critics. It's getting very faint. Well, no, it's, you know, this. I like him. <laughs> thanks. This, this is a, um, it, it's a way of working up. Good. It's called blo blocking in a painting, and it's a way that um, paint painters have been doing it for centuries Blood where you can out. start working in with a kind of a basic kind of colors mm -hmm. and, and, broad, and broad strokes, and then the more you put on, you, you can start refining the, the, the detail. But it's nice. I mean, like, it's like if you're starting to, if you're wanting to to, to, to work on something that's um, it's got a lot of detail, and you're not sure exactly how to do it. Well, if you just start blocking in the color, like you know, you know the rough shape that you want it to be, then you just keep working on it. And you just keep adding detail until finally you're happy with it. You know, so I know with him, I want to add a little bit of color up here. And I'm just, I'm just blocking in the color. So this color isn't necessarily what's going to be end up being, you know, by the end wow. of it, but. So, you know. So, so I'm just adding more of this and more of this and So when are you going back to New Orleans or do you have any plans or? I don't know, um Um it's not as humid. Oh, yeah, oh my God. I, I took a picture and put it on uh, our Facebook. Yeah, and yeah. and it, I took a picture of the hotel walls, and they were sweating. They were dripping oh, with water. water. It was crazy. It's yeah, it's a little nice. I mean, it gets worse. I mean, you know, uh, August. Oh no. No. So we, I, I, we would like to go back and, and just hang with Wendell and, and more time and go on the fall. And, and there were a few things that that I, I next time we go, I want to do. I'm. The World War II Museum, which I'm doing, I thought and you did that. well, we it just the chaos of the events and everything. It was just mm -hmm. like things get jumbled around. But the World War II Museum and the um and a carriage ride with Jack, just so we can kind of take it all. No, yeah. well, we, he didn't want to. He didn't want to. Well, he was just kind of indifferent about it, and I and uh, it seemed like that was the force and just wanted to get on the yeah. <laughs> Listen, I want to do it. You want to have fun? I need to find a runaway horse, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he didn't want to do it, huh? No. Oh. So, it's 8 o'clock. We can do Art News, or we can do Technique of the Week, or if we're doing Technique of the Week. Or we can oh. do... Why don't you do Art News, and then, because um, I need to get a couple of things for Technique of the Week. Okay. Well, the Technique. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do this. Let me switch cameras. Okay. Okay. Our technical difficulties. John has turned off the volume on this computer, so I'm gonna. I can't hear what's going on. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, so this is short and brief, but um, there's just a couple of things I thought were interesting. Oh, one of them was from you. Oh, yeah, so it was very interesting. <laughs> so Debbie, <Just> shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was fascinating and um, mildly inappropriate, which was oh, yeah. so you. <laughs> So, um, only mildly, only mildly. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so, um, on BuzzFeed, if any of you guys follow that, that news site, um, uh, they had a article written, um, about a jo Joanna Ebenstein who just put out a book called the, An the anatomical Venus, which, um, what this is, is basically, um, it okay it's all, all this book is all about the different uh these okay they were wax figures that were uh created to help people learn about the anatomy of the figure and um this particular artist joanna she went around and she researched all sorts of weird um you know different medical devices that were used all sorts of different things that would you know just all around creepy and weird and this was one of the things that she came across but I, I guess it was fascinating enough that it warranted its whole individual book 
which if you go to the link, it'll be at the bottom of the of the YouTube of this video, um, uh, and it'll show you the BuzzFeed article and all that stuff, and it is trippy to look at this stuff. Mm. Um, but anyway, this this uh, it's this says this anatomical Venus produced by the workshop at La Spicola is between 1784 and 1788. Um, it's displayed in her original rosewood and Venetian glass case at the Josephinium Vienna, Austria. I have no idea if I pronounced any of that right. But um, anyway, it, it, it's a life-size wax woman, um, mm -hmm. often with real uh, human hair and glass eyes created to teach anatomy to the general public in the late 18th, 18th century. So um, if you go to the site and you look at it, they, there's other women that were you know, created and you could actually pick the pieces out. And a lot of them, I mean, I think almost all of them had fetuses and all sorts of stuff that you could, you know, if you're learning the anatomy of the body, you could just dissect and it saved the fact that it saved, you know, not having an actual... Um, Let's say it was something happening in, is what it said. Yeah, well, I would imagine back then they probably didn't yeah, have a lot of ventilation. Reason, I don't yeah, know. Well, that's the but yeah. yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. Um, and they're beautiful. That's what's weird about them is you look at these figures and they're gorgeous and so creepy. Yeah, so they would use cadaver, cadaver yeah. for the models. Yeah, yeah, and the, and they would look in art books and all that sort of stuff. And and anyway, and in, in reading this this news article, I also read some of the comments from the people that were um, uh, commenting on the article. And and one was, you know, why why was this you know, acceptable, even though women back then couldn't could barely, like, show any skin and all that, and, um, and, and it was just interesting because it was the, to do, it was, <laughs> the, the article, or, like, a quote in it was, it was, they used seduction to, to intrigue men to learn about this, which, really, <laughs> it's creepy on all sorts of levels. Yeah, it's like wow. women weren't important enough to learn unless you I know. I, I, like it, it, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's just to learn. It is creepy. It's super creepy. But in that case, yeah, so well, you the whole and all the women, they're very I mean it, they I mean that is I mean they all look like they're out of um runs on the Yeah, they do. So anyway. Um so that's that. Mm. Look at that link. It's, it's super interesting. Um I, I do have to admit that once I looked at that link, I clicked on the book, and then I got kind of caught up in the morbid um, uh, other sort of books that Amazon offers on creepy no. diseases. It was, yeah, it was bad. But interesting illustrations, because it was all like artsy stuff. But anyway. Um, the other thing that I wanted to throw in there, throw in here, is that and we were on a, one of the plane rides. We were on, I was reading the American Way. And they had an article about Christo. So if you guys don't know who this is, he is an environmental artist who does these giant structures. Um, and he's, I mean, ridiculously famous for it. He, and you may, you guys may have know, may know him from what I think is one of his most famous because it was over here in the U.S. is called the Gates. He did in Central Park. Um, the what? The Gates. Oh. Really? And it's it's all this like fabric that runs through the the. Through Central Park, and I mean it's not there anymore. And all of these are only there for a limited time. Oh, so um, super cool. Uh, and I love this artist. I think he's just awesome. Oh, yeah, but um, he did a piece that just got completed, and it's actually um, right now it's up, and it's only going to be there until July third. And it it face it's called the Floating Piers, um, and it's in Lake Lucio in northern Italy, which. Correct me if I'm wrong, you can throw it up in the chat. But um, it uh, basically took divers anchoring together 220,000 high density polythylene cubes, um, and it's covered by 1,076,391 square feet of yellow fabric to create the piers, which is 52 feet wide and 14 inches high. So when you are on this thing, you, you basically can walk from island to island now. I, I mean, just for this, just until July 3rd, because it, it gets taken down July 3rd. Yeah. But um, while you're walking on it, because it's it's floating piers. Uh, so while you're walking on it, um, Christo himself said it feels like uh, you're either, it, feel, it feels like you're either walking on the water or you're walking on a whale that's swimming through oh, it. Wow. So, and because it's this sort of weird yellow gold chiffon fabric, it, it, when you look at it at different angles, it gives off 
different lights, um, like shimmery reds and all that sort of stuff that goes through this. Mm. So um, let me show you. Oh, sorry, let me show you some other images. That's that's the artist Christo. He's mm. he's on it before they laid down the fabric, but they're just these. They look like square coolers that are just in a in a row, just <laughs> you know, floating in the water. Wow. So. Um, I wonder where he comes from. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Well, and what's what's interesting about this guy is that he does his projects. If you go to his website, which will also be at the bottom, he, his um, projects are done over years. So, like for example, yeah. the Gates one that was in Central Park, because of all of the permits, the permissions, the building of stuff, the plans, that didn't actually even get completed until 2005, and he started it in 1979 with his wife. Good. So yeah. this. He actually wanted to do decades ago and with his wife who passed away in 2009. But oh, did she? Yeah, oh. which is why he hasn't done a piece in so long is because, he, you know, they were inseparable. They were huge partners in all of this. But um, uh, they both had dreamed this up and they tried different cities. And finally, they, they came across this one. Who are, they're huge into art culture. And so they, they gave them all the permits. They approved it. And if you go to the website... You can see like an aerial view of them. You can see the, the blueprints of the plants. It's super interesting. So, I mean, when this guy does art, he does art. He does art. art. <laughs> <laughs> he, does art. Yeah. he was, gosh, born in, in 19, oh my gosh, he's pretty old. Um, 1935? 19, no, wait, that was when his wife was born. Um, probably around that time, though. So, yeah, in the 1980s. Yeah, 1935, I believe. Anyway, so super interesting. Does he have another project in the world? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Like that's a good question. I don't know. Anyway, mm. that's art news, people. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> As always, awesome. Mm. Awesome. Well, hey, um, I thought... Um, while you were doing the art news, I thought I'd take the opportunity to loudly set up the technique of the week. Oh, okay. could, you, could you hear me over here? Not at all, babe. Not at all. Oh, um, are you going to make us come up there and do this? Well, you know, I was going to ask for two volunteers from the audience, but, you know, it could be any two <laughs> volunteers from the audience. <laughs> so, it doesn't have to be you guys. You know, we can just go. Yeah, you have an eight-year-old for Yeah. Well, be well, I was going to get Jack, but he seems to be pretty entrenched in the Minecraft in there. Well, this involved me getting paint all over my Probably. white shirt. <laughs> Probably. I'll be your volunteer. We, we'll, well, you both, it, it won't be bad. Okay. Sure. Hey, you don't have to. Do it? Huh? Yeah, we won't need to. Well, if you don't want. But should we do the technique? Sure. All right. <laughs> Bam. Technique of the week. <laughs> all right, guys. For this week of the technique of the week. I'm actually going to show you guys how to do a blindfold painting um, workshop. This is really easy. We do about 30 different workshops with museums. This one, though, is um, it's is the one that we have the most fun with, really. We have a, adults do it, kids do it. Everybody does it, and it's really nice, especially because if you have some children that are shy or adults that are shy, like my mom <laughs> over there <laughs> that's not sure about this, it's great because you're wearing a blindfold and you can't judge what you're doing. Really, I mean, you're, it's just all for fun, and um, and it's really the whole idea of it is to um, be able to use your senses in a different way. And so the main reason for this is to get kids used to thinking about art in a bit of a different way of, of loosening it up. So let me let me let me tell you what I have that set out here, and then we'll get you guys over. Um, <laughs> We're already yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> We're crowding. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, well, here, well, here, let me, maybe, maybe you show them, you know, I'll, I'll do the cameras. Oh. So, okay. There's okay. not much to changing the cameras. Is this cricket? It's, it's pretty, no, there's oh. no cr cricket. It looks like. <laughs> well, here's, well, here, here you, might, you might be able to, you, you, might, you might be able to do this better because you know the, the view. Yeah. Okay. But can you, can, so, so the different paints over here. You want me to talk about it all? Well, if you can hold it up so the, so yeah. the camera, it's this camera. Oh. I, I didn't switch it because I thought, well, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um. There's different things added to the paint. The way that it really works is um, every color feels different. The way that I paint is that I, I do it using raised lines, and and then I, I change the way each color feels, so that every color just feels different. So that the main the main thing that you use your eyesight for when you're painting is to know where you are on the paper and where it, and where you've been. Well, when I draw, I draw using raised lines, and I don't know if you're able to see this. This camera though. 
Okay. It is? Yeah. I switched over. Oh, you did? I already did it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me these things, man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So anybody so, past this point can't be seen in the camera. Okay. <laughs> sorry, this week is a hot mess. I'm telling you, that's like crazy. <laughs> I'm here. I'm okay. not sure which camera's on. Regis and Kathy. All right. So yeah. So what, like John was saying, he's got basically this. Are this... both these cameras on? Yes. <laughs> Okay. You're killing me over here, man. You're killing me. Okay. Let, let, let's regroup. Let's regroup for a second. Okay. This is how John and I do the art workshops. Basically, we go, we come in, and we have... It's usually better, I promise. We have a raised line drawing, which you can see here. And if I Maybe if I shift it a little bit, you can see the light reflecting off of it. But it's got... Um, we use the fabric paint, the tulip paint, to create kind of like a cartoonish flower. Okay? So when we sit down with the kids or the adults or whoever... We have them look at it before they're blindfolded and feel it, and, and so they kind of can orient themselves and, and realize what they're looking at, okay? We also supply them with <clears throat> uh, the primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and well, and white, um, and each color has a different texture. So when you look, when, when you feel them, like for example, red has sand in it, so it's real gritty. Um, yellow has bird seed in it, which you can kind of see. And the white has flour in it, so it's real thick. And the blue, it doesn't have anything in it, so it remains slippery. And the main okay. reason for this is because I actually make the paints feel, feel different for me. Um, I don't mix bird seed and sand in my paint. I don't mix it. And so, But in this, we do because I'm worried that some of the kids at some of these workshops, they might have an allergy to something, you know. So so we try to mix things in like flour and, and bird seed and sand that... Most kids aren't allergic to, so we don't have to worry, even worry about yeah. that. Yeah, and, and then we use poster paints. We always use these three colors, and then after we do the exercise, then we invite them to use all sorts of colors and do how they want. Yeah. So, and these are the different textures that are in. Oh, let me tell you something. If you're going through airport security with a white, with a bag of oh, white yeah. powder, <laughs> they stop you every time. <laughs> and then yeah, they have to do a test every time. Yeah, and everybody behind you in the airport looks at you like, that's a little questionable. Especially if you're rocking a man bun. When you're done, it like, yeah. no, no, we fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're from you. So here, I'm going to step out so you guys can get ready. Oh, we're going to do this on our own. Okay, okay. well. Ooh, I can, I can, do, I got this. So oh my it'll make more sense, I think, if they actually see you guys doing it. <laughs> okay, so you guys are the workshop people. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. You, we also supply everybody w with the use of these sleep masks. Um, and then um, some paintbrushes and also baby wipes to wipe your fingers because they're going <clears> to <throat> get all messy. Um, so what we do is we'll sit down. Everybody has their drawing in front of them and their paints. They, they kind of orient themselves to the paints, their drawing, where their paintbrushes are, where napkins are around them. Um, <laughs> I give you <laughs> You got that safe for me that you sent me the picture of. Oh, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm now over where they sit on the couch, and it's nice and comfy over here. I think maybe we should trade <laughs> situations. Well, yeah, but you're not on camera now. Oh, no, back of the mic. Okay. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> I like it. So that's all that matters. Okay, so then what we have everybody do is do take these, your mask. Do these kids ever have new manicures? Or they, I mean, well, they're no. paints. Well, we also <laughs> do that. <laughs> they'll wash the paint off my Oh, yeah, it'll come right off. It's, yeah, it'll and come right off. We actually do this, this workshop. I've never with, done this before. We actually do this workshop with a ton of um, adults. It's a, you know, it's a lot of adults with us. Now, before you put your blindfolds on, oh, let yes. me, okay, so let, let, me, let me give you guys the direction. Okay. So in front of you, you've got a raised line drawing. And this is the same kind of drawing that I use whenever I make a painting. Um, so... I just have to be able to feel where I am. Now, since you didn't make this drawing, it's a good idea if you go ahead and feel it, you become really familiar with the way it looks. So so use your eyes and look at it and also touch it. Yeah. Also, try to find a part on the drawing that you can find even if you get lost. So um, so you can reorient yourself. And a good, a good place to start sometimes is the very bottom because you can feel the bottom of the paper, so that's easy to find. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can kind of feel around to find the stem. So that makes a really easy place to be able to reorient yourself because sometimes when you get to painting, you get lost. It's a very cartoonish flower, but without the eyesight, you just, you know, it's, it, can, it can be difficult. Okay. Now, there's two main tips for this. The first tip is to use both hands whenever you're painting. If you're sighted, you're used to using one hand. 
to draw with. With this, you're going to use one hand to fill around with, to see with. Okay. The other hand, you're going to use to actually put the paint down. Now, if you get lost, it helps if you um, if you just slow down. Slow down and use both hands. So on the, the palettes in front of you, there's two different ways to understand the color. One is through the texture. The other is just by where the paint is on the palette. So every color is at a cardinal point. You know, there's the one at the top, the 12 o'clock, one at the bottom. So you can look and see which colors, you know. So if I lay out a palette, I know where I put the color. I could read the braille on the paint. I know it's blue. I put it here on the palette. So every time I reach that part of the palette, I know it's going to be blue. Okay. So you guys can do the same. So whenever you feel comfortable, and you can either use your fingers or you can oh use a brush. <laughs> okay. Why is there green? Why is there green on this palette? Well, because we, we were well, the idea was to keep it simple. Well, it was primary so, colors. If you want green, I want people to make green. Oh, if yeah. you want purple, I want you to make purple. Oh, yeah. Maybe blue and yellow oh, would uh -huh. be green. Ooh. Yeah. So, so, so to make green, it'll be the slick paint and the lumpy paint. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I to make green, it's the slick paint and the lumpy paint. Oh, to make sorry. purple, it's the it's the gritty paint and the slick paint. Well, I'm just remembering whether I Yeah, That's good. we'll be lucky if we got this primary color yeah. situation going on. Okay. So whatever you guys feel like you're ready. Put All right. Apples on. <laughs> um, oh, can you pee? I haven't done this in years because I just do it to other people. Can okay. you pee? No, you can't are pee. You, are you going to use your fingers? Or your well, brush? yeah, I'm probably going to. I'm all in. <laughs> this is happening. As long as it doesn't mess up. Now, <laughs> that's a good point. If there's any teachers oh, that yeah. are wanting to do this for their students, um, some some people find it easier to, to, to finger paint. Yeah. Other people find it easier to use a brush, so it really just depends. Um, this is a very inexpensive workshop to do. So if you're an elementary school teacher, if you're, um, if you're, you know, if you just want yeah. poster paint, flower, birdseed, and sand, and you're off the races. Um, you don't, you don't have to have sleep masks or anything. We have a ton of these things, but we also use just like you know, like strips of cloth for blindfolds. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this, from being the oh, I'm all over the place, from being the person that get, that usually watches other people do it, and then doing it, is that um, what what and this is probably what John preaches uh, morning and night about how he paints is that it forces you to concentrate on what you're doing. So like for example, talking right now and doing this, I I can, but I but I know from you know doing it that. You really have to kind of like orient yourself, and the only thing you're thinking about is what, where things are, and what it feels like. So, <clears throat> and I've noticed, like when I do it, I just oh, I'm all over the place. Oh, me too. <laughs> I've noticed that I'm all I'm that. Oh my gosh, you know your drawings are a little bit more detailed than my drawings. <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. That's, that's, I think that's I got one thing the that center. I tell people is that. It seems like I a very simple sort of drawing. Oh my god. But then once you get into it, it, start, it gets a lot harder. Oh my god, I don't even know if I'm on the paper. <laughs> well, now, I. You know, that's, that's good though. If you start losing it where you are, just slow down and you, you can go down and find the bottom of the paper. Even if you okay. have to lift the paper up, you can find the bottom. I'm even getting dizzy. Okay, so I think I have colored in the center of, I think I've colored in the center of the flower. And so now, and I'm just orienting myself to like an edge, maybe, and a petal. Ooh. And I'm going to maybe get some blue. And one of the things I've noticed because I think both That's you guys are finger painting it's hard for me to finger paint because you can't feel the lines anymore. Once you get the paint on your hand. I don't know how you would feel the lines when you were. Well well, well. whenever you're using a brush you're using one hand to look with and one hand to paint with and when you finger oh, paint you really need to do the same thing. You need to try to keep one hand clean. So one, one finger needs to stay clean. Um, well, one hand needs to stay clean while, while you use the other to paint with, whether you're using a finger or the brush. And that's one thing, um, we've done this workshop with thousands of visually impaired children and adults. How do they do? I mean, um, better than us. Yeah, they wow. usually do pretty good. <laughs> well, imagine they're used to. I don't know. I mean, even if they've never been, but, 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 but it's also, there's lots of sighted people that do really, really well. <laughs> And there's lots of sighted people and lots of visually impaired people that don't do well when they first do it. And one of the things I always tell people is that this is difficult in a way. When I first started painting, in a big way. it took me a year. I had a year to start practicing on how to feel things without looking, how to understand where I was and how to orient myself. You guys are being thrown in, you know, you guys have no training and you're being thrown in, but Jackie the other thing is that you can make the drawing. <laughs> yeah. So if you make the drawing, you know kind of what to expect. 
So, you know, with me, like, if I put a line somewhere, I know to look for that line there because I put it there. Also, when I first started painting, I only painted with like, two colors and really only two colors, but I had the option of three, but I usually use two, and I did that for months, and then I would add in a new color. So you guys are working on a paint, drawing that you didn't make yourself with no training and with four colors. You want me to make green? So to even give this oh, try is awesome. <laughs> Overachieving. Yeah. What's really cool though is that even even with all those things thrown against you, most people are able to at least be able to tell a color. So, and I'm wondering, like, are you able to tell which color is yellow? No, yeah. I'll say this though, from doing like, and then we probably need to adjust this a little bit. Is that once I lay down the yellow, it's hard to be, the the bird seed makes it hard to feel the drawing. Like yes. it's just getting in the way. So I I wonder if like there's a thing we could do to like a different oh, texture. Well, that's a really good point. You know, it's funny because. One of the, that's, I'm glad you mentioned, that's another advantage I have is because I, I mix my own paint. I don't mix birdseed in my paint, but um, I mix my own so I know the texture that I'm looking for. And if you make your own, because there's some kids that will use them a lot more, they want more birdseed. All right. Well, you know. I took my mask off. Oh, I was going right. to sneak over there I just want to go on record as saying I was making a modern art. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very abstract. Well, the great thing I'm about this is that even if you mess up, it's just an abstract flower. Here you go. Oh, my God. I didn't even get... I thought I got the white. <laughs> 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 you did? You, you no. There's no white. <laughs> we're, we're crying. Oh, out. there's white. You got white. I never got it in my eye. Oh, no. You look oh, fine. Okay. Right. Yeah, mine okay. looks like an unfinished masterpiece. Well, yours is great. <laughs> you look jacking. Well, Jackie, look at hers. It looks like good. Fun. Yeah. Well, I I have done this a couple times. <laughs> she had to show off and make green. Oh wow! Well, fancy. Look at, I mean, hers is. It takes practice. I've done it a few times. Yeah. Anyway, you know, so well, at least I did get in the petals. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a, really a good, good start. Point. I like <laughs> that. If you guys did this every day, do you think you'd get better at it? Yes. No. <laughs> you would. You would get better at it. Yeah, I was just thinking. I'm going to be over here bright and early tomorrow morning, John. We're having a workshop. All right. <laughs> so. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys for giving this a try. Technique. Well, thank you, week. John. I have no respect for you. <laughs> well. All right. Oh. The floor is yours. Very nice here. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> kisses, kisses from my mom. Well, um, well, if you guys wanted to want to talk about a, 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 something, I'll, I'll get this set back up for Ollie. Oh, okay. Hold on. So, um, well, I want to thank you guys though for for giving that a try. I know it's a it's a bit of a pickle. No, I've always wondered how you did it. Now I still wonder how you did it. <laughs> no, I really wonder how you did it. <laughs> Anyway, okay. So my hands are a mess. You know, I did notice when I was blindfolding that I got dizzy. Did you? Oh, really? I didn't get, I didn't get dizzy, but I could see how that could happen. Oh, that's a... You know how... Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that... Position. How is that musician? Uh, Stevie Wonder? Yes. No, I mean, that, that, that's just a blindism thing. Well, I know, but it's because I, I can see it. You know, that yeah, it does. Um, you, you can, you can't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's one thing where, like, um, that's one thing that I learned about vision loss is that um, there's all different kinds of vision loss. Ninety-five mm -hmm. percent of people who ha have a visual impairment um, has some sort of light perception, and even though it doesn't make an image, um, you know, so there's no vision. The little bit of light perception coming through can actually help to orient you so that you don't become as, as dizzy. And I know for me. Um, I'm better when there's a little bit of light, use like a very low sort of light, and like I, I don't I don't get dizzy, like I don't you know, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes and, and I'm fine in the pitch black too. It's just every once in a while, um, and I can't see anything. It's just that there's some part of your brain that orients, right? You know, and then it knows like you know, so it just sort of like, I don't know. It's weird. Well, and I mean, there's somebody there's probably somebody out there that knows way more about it than I do. I just know, I know, I know, I know. My low vision specialist was telling me that she said he said oh oh that'll the, no. You will well the light perception will actually help keep keep you horizontal um, or, or vertical or whatever way you want to be, I guess, whatever it is. <laughs> probably <laughs> vertical. It's probably uh, you know, just lay down. where blind people a lot of times don't know. It's a real problem. They're sleep pattern gets in Oh yeah, I've heard about that. I don't know. Is that is that do you experience that though? 
Um, yeah, you know, um, whatever, whenever um, the school for the blind we have here in, in Texas is called the Chris Cole School. And whenever I was there, um, my, like my normal rhythm now is more like two or three in the morning. Like I, I, like I, I get tired then instead of used to be more like 11 or 10. And then in, and now it's two or three and it's just sort of like that happens. And I was at Chris Cole School and I, I think I, I, you know, I went to sleep at 10 because I was trying to force sleep. And then I woke up at three and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm up. I know I'm up and no one else is going to be up. And then I heard all this tap, tap, tapping out the halls and I, and I peeked out and there was just people all along the halls just going. I thought, oh, my people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody was up. Oh, <laughs> everybody was just, <laughs> like I finally arrived. <laughs> you, you, you guys understand. So, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and I, went, I went like to the little activity room where they have like games and stuff and TV and. It was just chock full of people in there yeah. doing stuff. I thought that's nice. And they're learning. They were there for to learn to use the cane, basically, weren't they? Well, you know, at the, at the yeah, at the Chris Cole School. Like I, I was just there for a little bit, and because I, I was already in college. Mm -hmm. But you can go there. There's dorm rooms. Like I was staying in a dorm um, for the, that little short time I was there. But you go there and live there. Oh yeah. You know, if you're you oh, know, yeah. so you learn everything. You learn. You can learn a trade or. Yeah, yeah, but also like like if you're a kid in school, like you oh, go wow. you can go to school there because, mm. um, you know you can do or just as much help as you need or whatever you need, and, which I think is pretty cool. Because you know they don't force anybody into anything. You know, if you the only bad thing though is is because of that though a lot of people that could use more help probably don't get it because they're I don't know. There's a lot of children I think like it, it's interesting. 99% of the people that I do workshops with don't have any sort of disability at all. But because I do have a disability and, and we really try to work with different groups, we've done workshops with thousands of children that have disabilities and, and thousands of children who are visually impaired. But um, it's interesting, though, to see children that, that like, like one child that can go around a room, they can go around the building, they can go play, they can do stuff. Um, and then another child who has the same sort of visual disability, you know, the same sort of circumstance, but they haven't had any training at all, mm. and they can't get out of a car that's locked, you know, if you know, or yeah. something, or or they can't get out of a room by themselves, or they can't, or they're in a room, they're not sure where they are. And I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, of course, I'm not like putting that kid down or anything. I'm just being, you know, it's, it's a shame whenever you see that because you know that with a little bit more training. Uh, which you know, which I'm sure will come later or something. But, you know, with a little more training, how much more they can do. Well, that's why these workshops I think are so important because I think the parents naturally, you know, when you have a child that has a disability like that, you know, they would hesitate to send a small child off. Yeah. To a dorm. I mean, well, yeah, and you know, you don't even have to do it at a dorm either. I mean, because you could. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I can see where they, you know, it would make it hard. Yeah, well, well, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of times, you know, I, I know, like, if Jack had a dis, if he was sick or he had, which I'm not saying that blindness is an illness, I'm not sick, I don't have an illness, but, um, but I mean, if you have a child that has a particular need or something, you want to feel it, and some of these parents, being really great people and wanting to really take care of their children, right. might do everything for them to the point where the child can't get out of a room by themselves, and, and um, where another parent will say, oh, you know, like kind of like the O&M instructors at, at one of the school we went to in, um, um, where did we just leave? Light out for the blind. Light out for, yes, light out for the blind. And, and <laughs> thank you, in New Orleans, thank you. Um, the O&M instructors there were amazing. They were really, really good. And it was neat because, like, um, J Jackie was playing with a whole room full of children with the vis visual impairments. So all running around, they all have canes. Jack's in there, they're all running around. I don't think you can tell the difference, you know. I mean, they're all just having a blast. And if one of them come, comes up and asks one of the instructors, like, where's, where's the water fountain? He'll say, oh, put, put, put your hand out in front of you and walk, you know. You'll hit a wall. When you hit the wall, take take a left. You'll find it eventually. It's down there somewhere. Where, like, somebody who was just volunteering, like a parent or something, if a child asked that, they, they, would, they, they, would, you know, they would. They would take them. They'd be all over, like, helping them get there and stuff. Where the old num striker was like, oh, put your hand out, walk, you know, just walk, yeah. walk forward, you know, and the kid might trip over something, they might fall down. But the cool thing about it is that the kids almost never tripped over anything. They were so used to it yeah. that they were running around the room playing, you know, with it. And yeah, well, the, all these things, like these bouncy balls, and like you get on, you hop, you hop, and you 
these big rings you get in bouncing off each other and i mean it's just really cool just really really cool you know and, and and they weren't being like mean to the children or anything it's just that they weren't they were they're making sure that they were safe it was just you know there's 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 there's, certain, there's a certain thing where kids want to interact they want to try to do things and they try to make it where they could and a lot of those kids had really good mobility kids want to be and so it, I, I thought that was cool. And then you see some other places where they're they're not like that. Like the old instructors might be more of a coddling sort of thing, and and their students aren't 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 as progressive. You know, I don't know. It's it's hard though. I mean, it's hard when you have a visually impaired child there that you know they they come out and they ask you like, oh, can you help me get to the bathroom? And you feel bad when you say, it's in the corner. <laughs> you know, it's in the corner. It's on the right corner in the back part of the room. You you know, have have at it. You know, and and. You know, because you want to help them, but you, but are you really helping them? You know, every. But I'm not saying just do that if you see a blind child, don't help them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like you know, show them the skills to be able to find it themselves. And the only reason I want instructors were telling these kids is because these kids had been taught the the skills of how to trail, right. how to find a wall, how to how to follow that wall in a safe way. You know, they they had been taught all this. So the only instructor wasn't just telling this to a kid he just met off the street. You know, these were students that they had and you know and 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 those instructors knew that you know the only way to keep these kids truly safe is for them to get these skills so anyway i'll, I'll get off that sorry i i get I, I get kind of i don't know it's just you know we we, we like even re recently we've been around some some students that really needed some help and you, and you see some different children that could really use some help you know and, and it just makes you really want them to get it you know i don't know so we got some feedback, and um, people thought we did awesome on our um, little mini workshops. <laughs> Way to go, weekend. guys. Yeah, we're awesome. Um, Andy's tuning in. What up, bro? Hey, Andy. How you doing? He said he went and um, saw an airbrush demo recently and, and, uh, and then complimented you. So yeah. I'm going to take a screenshot really? of that. <laughs> wow, nice, nice. He also says that you regularly be here on the dark. Oh, did he? Oh, I did. Well, Andy, I think I beat you at darts. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> Dang. Not much poor, poor Andy. Them fighting words. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Andy, man, um, you better, you better, you, you better put, put your, your camping pants on because we're going to be doing some serious camping. Yep. I'm just telling you. <laughs> hey, and if anybody's in Colorado, we're going to be spending a ton of time in your state <laughs> here coming up. So be prepared. Yeah, yeah, be prepared. You better leave now. <laughs> so this, this is fair warning. We're calling it fair warning. Leave the state. But, but we're actually going to be heading up, I think, July 5th. And we're going to be doing some different art shows there. The Salida, um, one in Evergreen, one in Denver. Mm -hmm. And um, like the, uh, some art festivals, different things. And checking out the mountains. Yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah. Our game plan is for anybody out there that goes to those festivals or is in Colorado. I know there's a couple of people. Somebody chimed in a minute ago. I, I missed it, but said we should take the long route to Colorado and come see them. Oh, cool. What, it, it might have been Mallory in, in, a, in a Flagstaff. Oh, wow. That would be the long route, wouldn't it? I guess. But, I, I don't really know maps. I'm not, I'm not much of a driver. I don't know. But, yeah, July. So, so as of right now, the idea is to leave July 5th, head up to Salida, be there for a few days doing the Salida Arts Festival, and then we go over to Evergreen doing the um, oh, what is that one called? We have another, uh, uh, it might be the Cheeseman Art Festival. That sounds familiar, yeah. I think so, I think so, yeah. A anyways, in Evergreen, Colorado, so we'll, so the Cheeseman, it's, oh. a, it's a park out there, I think. So Go up there. We'll be there for a few days, and then we come back home. We're gonna drive back home real quick. Gotta go to a concert, and then we gotta go to uh, John's Got a Gallery reception in San Antonio, and then we drive directly back. And that then we'll be in Denver for a couple weeks. So there's a de there's an art festival out in Denver, and um, oh, Lord. and then you're gonna come visit. <laughs> And uh, and then we drive back. So we'll be up in the Colorado area. If anybody's out there, shoot us an email, Facebook post, or something, and let us know so that we can swing by and go get drinks or hang out or something. That would be cool. 
Yeah, yeah, and we're and we're going to try to post lots of video and stuff about these different things. We just bought a giant truck with a box on the back and and, and a camper, and um, um, so we're actually going to go out there. And we're trying to camp and really and hang out and to do different things. But um, yeah, we're it's going to be an adventure, though. We've never done. This is a bigger truck than Jackie's ever driven in her life. She's never pulled a camper. Um, so the whole rig and the camper, everything is probably going to be like 45 feet long, all of it together. And then, and we're going to do it in the mountains. So why, why? Why oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying, so we're going to, um, um, but we're going to videotape it all too. And, and, and you know, and a big thing too, I mean, I mean, I'm curious, I've never done this before. And okay. so we're going to try to, I don't know, just, just see what it's like to travel in, in, but the big goal for me is I'm going to try to paint every day. Whether we're on the road, whether it's a travel day, and that's one reason yeah. Jackie was asking if anybody has any ideas for a way to set up a little mini traveling art studio in the seat area, like a truck, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know, so because I'm going to try to do that, and we'll see. And I think I'm have to work on some smaller paint paintings or something. Yeah, and and I mean, and we're gonna. I mean, the whole time on this trip, we're gonna be posting constantly, and I mean, I would imagine we'll we'll probably live just everything is there's gonna be so much content I think we're probably gonna add a link to the website that's just strictly like our day-to-day -day wackiness that's happening so yeah you know I mean it's, it's gonna be interesting we've never traveled this far I'm not gonna be able to do any of the driving but good. um yeah good yeah. <laughs> although I have to say I'm an excellent driver I haven't got a ticket I bet, in years I bet, <laughs> so I bet you could do it the next one. thank you I appreciate it. I, I go drive very well for a very short amount of time <laughs> <laughs> if you just cut out the yeah. ending part of it um so i'm wondering we also you know i want to thank everybody too that's that's gone followed us through this whole episode and stuff uh, all the shenanigans that have we've gotten compliments on our hot mess oh really wow yeah. well yeah. maybe that's the secret maybe we should you know yeah, we should just we should just be you know not prepared all the time <laughs> yeah maybe well you know what's funny is it's like everything was working like i did a check on stuff everything was like clicking away everything was oh i thought well this is easy peasy we're adding all this then like one minute before we go to ready to go live i started doing this and like, what in the world it's like it's like you had a timer on it like you knew it was a minute nuts um but i'm thinking well, maybe we should give away some art okay all right all right so uh yeah we're gonna do the question of the week okay and I know, I don't know, I don't think she's watching right now, but uh, Donna won it last, two weeks ago, uh -huh. or whenever the last time we did this was, and I just haven't gotten prints done of the dog in the truck and all that stuff. But it will, though. If for some reason you have not received your print and you won in the past, let me know. It's chaos, and I will need to get it out to you. <laughs> Please shoot me another email. But I think, I, th I, think, I think they've all um, gone out except Donna's, and it's just because we don't well, have, we don't have it yet. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. don't, it hasn't been, it doesn't exist yet, but. Yeah. So, um, okay, here is the question. Okay, in 1963, Ali released an album of spoken word music on Columbia Records that was nominated for a Grammy. What was the title? A, Float Like a Butterfly. B, I Am the Greatest. C, Muhammad Ali Sings the Hits. Oh. D, Ali Says What? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> sure. Okay. So mom, so mom, you Everybody, can't win because you're part of the studio. Anybody that doesn't know how this works. But you, you can play you, along. Anybody that doesn't know how this works, you need to, um, in the comments box on uh, YouTube, you need to write what you think the answer is. I'll write your name down, and then we'll put it in a big um, hat thing, and we'll pull your name out. Um, so if you think you know the answer, in the comments, please write the letter that corresponds with it. I'll read it again. In 1963, <laughs> Ollie released an album of spoken word music on Columbia Records that was nominated for a Grammy. What was the title? A, Float Like a Butterfly. B, I Am the Greatest. C, Muhammad Ali Sings the Hits. D, Ollie Says What? <laughs> so, Mom, do you, do you have any ideas of which one? Oh, I always have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think yes, I do. Oh well, before before you re reveal, let's let's hear what Mom thinks too. Oh yeah, well, I think well naturally uh, it's probably B, but I think it, that I would say A just because I'm oh. a good catchphrase. Oh, oh okay. So I'm hedging my bets, and if it's not B, it's C. 
<laughs> D's looking pretty good. <laughs> so, uh... I don't know it's not <laughs> Well, you know, this was the 70s. Um, all right, I'm going to read it one more time. In 1963, Ollie released an album of spoken word music on Columbia Records that was nominated for a Grammy. What was the title? A, Float Like a Butterfly. B, I Am the Greatest. C, Muhammad Ali Sings the Hits. D, Ollie Says What? <laughs> anyway, okay, so. <laughs> Sorry, I, don't know. I don't know, it's hilarious. You want to no. Okay, how this works is that you will. Okay, I'm going to reveal the answer in a second. Once you, whoever wins, they get to pick a, a medium sized print. And we'll email us the information and their address and all that stuff, and we'll send it to you for free. Sure, they will. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure, we will. Like, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm about to re reveal the answers for last chance to ask. I mean, people guess. Ooh. Okay. All right, I'm revealing it. It is B. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. Okay, so. Oh, all right. Let me switch over. Ah! Hey, doesn't Andy have have, have, have some, some boxing gloves for Muhammad Ali? Is that really? Yes. Actually, that is a, a brilliant thing to, to bring up. Um, Everything I say is brilliant. <laughs> well, um, I, my mom bought him boxing gloves from a charity event auction, and he has them in his... Um, his game room. My brother has a giant uh, game room on the top level of his house, and um, he's got all sorts of like signed paraphernalia from sports stuff. Yeah, he's got a ton of things. A ton of things. It's really really cool. So um, anyway, yeah, he's got a, he's got a pair of uh, Ollie boxing gloves. I like to go up there. I like to go up in his sports paraphernalia room and break lamps. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> lamps that are really hard to replace <laughs> like, because they're. they're <laughs> Okay, so everybody needs a hobby. <laughs> That's mine. All right, so everybody that okay, everybody that that said B, got it right. Congrats. I have all your names in some on some papers. Did did a lot of people get it right? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, quite a few. Oh, yeah. where you go, guys? Where you go, people? It was B. This is Jack's one of Jack's Halloween costumes that we made for him. Oh, it's a Batman. It's a, ba it's a Batman head. It's upside down. Oh, is it? Oh, is it's the Lego ba Batman. It's a Lego Batman. I got some serious compliments on this. At oh, I'll, I'll tell one. you what. And it's and it's broken. I'll yeah. tell you what. <laughs> the um, the old the old. I, I googled the Lego Bat Batman San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. And Jack's picture came yeah, up. Yeah, came up. He was he was the number one hit. Yeah. Because really? he looked just like Lego Batman. People were taking pictures of him all day long. Hey, tell the website. Yeah. Well, he's on like the Google search. Like yeah, the yeah, he was like he was like the okay. number one Yahoo Google. Isn't that weird? All right, so does he know it? Yeah, I'm sure I showed it to him. He doesn't. He's weird. He doesn't care. Okay, Debbie's gonna pick it. Pick a name. Make sure you only pick one. You only got one. I think. Okay. <laughs> you want me to open it? Yes. All right, the <laughs> winner of the print is Linda. That's. Where'd you go, Linda? Okay. Let's see what she wants to do. So, congrats, Linda. Hi, Linda. Again, yay. What you want to do is um, email bramlet at gmail.com and say what medium sized print you like, any of the art that's on his website, and give us your address, and I will send it out um, probably Wednesday of this week. So, and I'll send you all. Unless unless <laughs> unless you're wanting a print of the Muhammad one. Oh yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. that's like brand new, it'll take a little bit of time to get out there. But um, if there's something in the collection, let us know, and I will get it right out. Well, thank you guys for playing. That's fun. That's that's awesome. Y'all, I've been wanting to ask about that picture behind you with the butterfly with the dog. Oh no, yes. Collie. It was. Is that Collie? You gonna hold it up? Papillon. It's a oh the papillon. Uh, which is French for a butterfly. And that, what kind of dog is that? It's a papillon. Oh, I thought you said, I thought you said the butterfly. <laughs> well, no, um, it's a papillon, which is a butterfly dog. Oh, okay. It's like ants. Oh, oh, they have butterflies. No. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, all your, for all your butterfly hunting needs. <laughs> they fared out the butterflies. Yeah. 
Oh, Did it, funny. Rascal? Thanks, man. I'm our dog. <laughs> mm -hmm, really? I am hunting the butterfly. Did I kill the butterfly when I saw you? Step back. She's a dream killer. <laughs> oh, man. Good Lord. Okay. That's great. <laughs> well. So, and, and he chimed in and he said Ollie was one of the greatest celebrities when it came to sign, signed autographs. He felt that every fan should have one. He said that he said this in several interviews and he never turned down an autograph. So, wow, that's awesome. That is cool. That's really, really cool. You, you hear some some celebs that charge money. Yeah, I know. We ain't never had a celebrity cool. at Comic Con. So it's just cool. That is neat. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to the painting. Yeah, let me show you. And I'm not gonna ready. I'm not gonna finish the painting tonight. Oh. Um, but we're going to do a, probably another live feed this week just, just for fun, just for kicks and giggles and try to get the Facebook live streaming going. Um, and I'll probably, I'll, I'll finish it up and I'll show it on there as well. And one part is because some of my paints exploded on the other paints and now it's just a hot mess. I'm going to have to, um, that's just part of the fun of, you know, a live show. If anything <laughs> that can go wrong, we get it all wrong in one episode. Mics, cameras. And I think it's still funny. Every time that Jackie wants to switch a camera, she has to do it by hand. She has to, to manually go in there and pull cables and put other cables in. I, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. replugging cables in and pulling cables. At least it sounds working, yeah. <laughs> doesn't sound like a death rattle. Somebody said that they did hear a clicking. Did they do that? Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, the clicking might be right. Oh. Uh, Linda said um, uh, she's giving a, a gift certificate of yours to somebody as a wedding gift tomorrow. Oh, well, thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. That's okay. Cool. Uh, well. Oh, and Valerie asked, how did the dog with the sunglasses come out? You want to show it real fast? Oh, yeah. Do you know where it is? Oh, yeah. I hung uh, everything up because to okay. get it off the ground. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh get thank it. you. Oh. Thank you for asking, by the way. I, I forgot. We... Have, I shown, have I shown the puppies painting yet? I... No, I don't. I don't think you show you. Oh, it was the, a mad dash to get some of them done, so oh, I don't the, think you. Oh, thank you. Showed them. So there's that one. Yeah. Oh, puppies. Uh, Ta-da! Mm -hmm. So. Really cool, John. Yokero. <laughs> Yokero painting. Oh. So here's this one, and so I, I went. I went with the green background, mm -hmm. mostly because there's so many oranges and reds in his face. I thought it'd make it pop. And with the red sunglasses to make it pop a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna thing too. Oh, is, it, is this one on? Yeah. Too? So and then puppies. Oh, thank you. Boobies. Oh, so here's a puppies cute. one. That's real fast. This one. Oh, it's that damn one. That's for um the okay. So John's got a show at the Griller Gallery in San Antonio. Damn. Um, and uh. <laughs> oh my God. Alarming. <laughs> Um, oh, hello, Armie. <laughs> so John's got a camera wasn't on me, right? <laughs> no, uh, just, yeah, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> so July one, all the way to August thirty first, I believe. John's got a show at the Griller Gallery in San Antonio, which it's all dogs, and fifty percent of the proceeds goes to Guide Dogs of Texas. So we're yeah. super excited about that. It's it, you know, yeah, which cool. which we'll show everybody pictures and. I think one of the I think the day we take I think we take it all all the art down there maybe on a Friday so we may even shoot some footage for a show that day so um, so we can check it out. So Somebody said you have nice moves, John. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, um, thank you for noticing and acknowledging <laughs> my nice moves. <laughs> yeah, listen to what Andy said. My mom was friends with. With his best friend, and that is how we got the boxing glove signed. Mm. You can see the shaggy writing from his Parkinson's. It was Parkinson's job. Oh, you he called it. signing autographs shortly after his glove. Oh, that's wow. interesting. I didn't know that. And I'm wow. Really wow. Okay. Well, isn't that, isn't that, money. Isn't that cool? Money. That's really cool. Man. Well, well guys, if there's anybody in. Colorado, like, like I say, come on out for that. And, and we're actually going to be camping, so we're going to be doing a lot of camping. So if anybody's in the area. Yeah, if anybody has any We'll be making of, burgers. <laughs> if anybody has any tips and tricks of the trade of the camper lifestyle and RV parks, please let us know because at this point we're just, man, we are going in so green. These people are going to look at us yeah. like we're crazy. 
Yeah. The only thing we can probably top them on is how to party. Yeah. Well, John, you need to forget <laughs> this painting. You need to forget this painting gig and start the dance show. Oh, yeah. there we go. Valerie said, get down with your bad stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She said we could camp her. Uh, we could camp and fly stuff out She really her. likes your movie. She said <laughs> you can camp here. <laughs> 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 Well, that's great. We do have a disco ball, so <laughs> yeah. we'll bring it. And, we'll, and a bubble machine. We got a bubble machine. machine. Yeah, we yeah. are set. We are set. And people doing bubble machines. And we know how to live. Stephanie, Stephanie said I should get a toy truck with a trailer so I can practice backing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. But you know, you know, we we have a trailer. It's, a, it's just a ten foot trailer that we used to haul the art with, until uh, until we got the truck that we're calling the Ox. And we're, I forget why we're calling it the Ox. Well, one of it is the way I sign my paintings. It looks like O X, which is Ox, mm -hmm. and um, and it rhymes with box, and it's a box truck. And it's big and it's, it's big and it's powerful. Ox like. Uh, yeah. 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 So, and we're also going to paint it. So, if anybody out there has any painting ideas for how to paint the outside of the box Ooh. that's on the truck, because right now it's just a, it's a white truck, four door, it's big in the front, and then it's got a, a pretty like cube like box that sits on the back that we're going to at least put John's signature and website and stuff on. But if anybody out there has any creative ideas on what to paint this thing, we're, like, we're going yeah. to get nuts. I liked your idea. The Art of John Bramlett, or, you know, Johnny John John, a Bramlett production, Johnny Bramlett John. book. <laughs> Bramlett, Bramlett, Bramlett. Johnny John John. And I want a giant flag that hang from the back of the truck that goes back at least 20 feet with the name. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. So it's just waving in the wind as we go ripping down the highway. <laughs> Something subtle. Something subtle. Kind of like um, at the, okay. the, art, the art festivals. Some of the artists don't have signs. Some of them just have, like, the little plastic placard thing. Other people have the somewhat signs. We have a ten foot like, a sign with like two foot letters. Bramlet. It's a, it is a bit much. And then when um, we got the ten by twenty tent, you were like, should we get a bigger sign? Yeah. That's not. You could put B R A M, you know, on one, and then B L I D D on the other. <laughs> That'd be nice. And, and make it blink. Blink, blink. Oh yeah. Blink. Blink. Ooh, Valerie said her husband could airbrush the truck for us. That would be cool. And she also did the off the rocks of that. You know, but the sign works. I've had people that were half half the festival away. They're like, "Where's John? St oh, there it is." <laughs> so that's well, that's how it really helps. That is true. <laughs> I think he's got my idea. What? I was thinking you ought to do a wrap with your paintings, and he said, "Check out the companies that do you guys head over." Wait, wait. We're a trend of Check out the companies that do the image wraps on cars. Oh yeah. Yeah, we we did look into that. And, and, and it's still a possibility. It is actually pretty expensive. Like, we looked into it because I have a, a four-door Jeep, and I really wanted to get the Batman symbol um, skinned over it. Like, and um, I looked into it, and it was crazy expensive. So... Was that, it was like a thousand or two? Oh, it was like two thousand. Yeah, like two yeah. for you know. Is it for... because of the image? Is it... It's probably the, the just the process of, of, of wrapping your car and then... But maybe the box is not as expensive. I don't know. I want to say it's pretty. It's still like up in the like main almost two thousand range. Yeah, it's it's fairly I mean, expensive. I mean, the print because you got the whole thing, so you have like a, a massive printing. It would look cool. Though, I mean, it's, it, the the box itself is nine foot long by probably like seven feet or wow, five that feet. Would look cool. Something it, yeah. it's seven feet wide and and nine feet long and five feet tall. Something like that, yeah. Five so and a half it would feet, be yeah. a massive print job, and then you. Yeah, I mean it's still a possibility, but at this point we're we're <laughs> we're willing to get over it and do a projector with like just an image of something, and then just get it out there with like spray paint or paint, and then shellac it. Yeah, um, well, I, I, I actually get I actually get auto paint, like but just you know instead of you know back you mm -hmm. know the way like a auto paint place would do it, but. But we're saying black, black and white, maybe just something where it's kind of simple. Or you have a signature. What painting would you put on it if you did? If it would probably just be the, the signature. I mean, what if thing? you weren't going to do like any. Oh yeah, like, yeah I don't know. You would ever... I I would say it'd probably be one of your like stroll in the rain types. That's what I was thinking. Those are those tend to be the popular. Yeah, what people know like recognize with him. Or, I don't know. Like, you know, the truck would be cute. Only bad uh, thing is that would be cute. <laughs> only bad thing is it would detract from my name. It'd be hard to read the name, the Bramlett, you know, the big letters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Golly. 
ego is your small ego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no ego at all. In there. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So what else do you have to do? To, what, what, so what are like some well, of the things you're gonna add to the painting since we only have like two minutes? Yeah. So so guess what? I'm um I'm gonna. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to heighten the colors a little bit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do something different with the shirt. I'm not sure exactly what. I put. I blocked out the colors. I'm happy with the blocking out, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different with the shirt. Like you know, put some other colors on it. His face. I'm gonna put some darker colors, and then over that, I'm gonna put some highlights and things. And that's one of the things um, that, that I'm using thin color right now. And one of the mistakes I think some people make when they try to add a lot of color that if you want a lot of bright color. You have to let it dry a little bit, and you have to like put one color down, let it dry, and then put it on near it on it, or, or one that that complements that color. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of browns. You end up with, browns fine, but I mean you just end up with muddy sort of color, dark color. So if you want to keep it bright, then you have to kind of do it, you know, in little layers or at least put put down some darker colors, and then you can go over it with the opaque lighter colors. So that seems to help quite a bit. So that's what I'm going to do with this. And then I'm sure we're going to do another live show here before next Friday, just like on Facebook, and just try to see if we can get that thing going. And, um, you know, without it having a hissy fit on us. And, um, well, yeah, it was the first time back to have everything up and running. We've been, um, everything's been packed up. And, it's... and I feel bad because as soon as we started the Facebook feed, feed, we had like 16 people that were on it. And then I had to stop it, you know. So, you're like, so Hi. sorry if you're if you're one of those guys. I mean, it was just on. Like we had it on for a minute, and we had like 16 people that were watching it. Yeah. And then just like in your face. So, I so sorry. Telling, I, 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 I was telling y'all about the monkey you drew as a child. Oh, a previous show we talked about. Or or or, or, or it might have been we were in the book. New Orleans. Actually, it might have been when we were. In it might have been in the book. Do you still have that monkey? No, I, I think I you have it. I didn't. I just wondered. I thought I didn't know. I thought you I thought maybe. How do you know about that, Tony? <laughs> Are you hiding in the closet, Tony? <laughs> did, you, did, did you did you hear what we were just talking? About? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, guys, I guess uh, you know. I just want to thank everybody for coming and watching this live stream. This and this has been great. This has been a weird live stream. Hot mess, but fun. Hot mess. Yeah. And I want to thank my mom for coming. As oh, wow. a, my awesome. Jackie thanks thanks for, for doing the the, pain, the blindfold painting with me. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, actually, what what I would like to do is do a separate blindfold painting that uh, um, video that's more organized, so that if anybody wants to share it with schools that they know yeah. or anything like that. That's Honestly, it's never it never goes like that normally. When we yeah, usually collect it. So we'll have like an actual legit video that shows like the process yeah. of the workshop, and then you can share it with schools that might want to try to. In, Incorporated or, or have John out or something like that. So, um, yeah, and then we will post a picture of the uh, finished painting probably tomorrow or the next day, whenever John finishes it. And then we'll be doing more live feeds throughout the the, the week. So yeah, and everybody put on put on your your party pants and get ready to go to Colorado. Woo -woo! Party pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thanks everybody. Have have a great night and thank thank you so much for chatting with us.